And I'm realizing that my strategy for real estate investing was a smart strategy. But if I'm only relying on the company and the, the money I have in the bank, well, now we've got an issue. So I started to learn about working with other people's money, raising private capital, and I ended up going down that path. And that really changed for us because now I was able to keep looking for deals as opposed to waiting for me to have that money saved up in my bank account. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. of raising private money. I'm your host, Jay Connor, also known as the Private Money Authority. And here on the show, we talk about exactly what the title of the podcast is, Raising Private Money. My guest today has raised $10 million in private money. And his niche, his expertise is actually in uh, multifamily and apartments and, and thus and so. Most of the private money that he has raised has actually come from busy professionals that want to be involved in investing in real estate without, you know, taking on that second job of finding deals, negotiating deals. And, you know, his private lenders want to sit back just like my private lenders, be totally passive and, you know, receive high rates of return safely and securely. In addition, his private lenders are able to reduce their tax obligations and really, really build generational wealth by being passive investors, i.e. passive private lenders. My guest uh, was so kind to have me as a guest on his show, which is Target Market Insights, multifamily plus marketing podcast. It was just an amazing time being on his podcast, so you'll definitely want to check his out as well. My guest is located up in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, and every day he's helping professionals become private lenders as they invest in his apartments and multifamily deals. In just a moment, you're going to meet my guest and my good friend, Mr. John Kasman, right after this. John, I hear it all the time from my real estate investing students and my colleagues that I network with that have raised a lot of private money. And what I hear from them is that their life and their career was totally transformed and changed by this world of private money. So how about share with me and uh, my listeners what happened this is really a, a multi-part question. What happened in your real estate investing career that caused you to explore and gravitate towards private money? That's the first question. The second question is, is after you got private money, how did it change your business? Well, that's a great question. First of all, thank you for having me here, Jay. I'm excited to talk to you and all your listeners about raising private money. And to answer your question, we have to go back just a little bit. So I, I have a background in marketing and advertising. And early in my career, uh, I had the pleasure of working at a great company, General Motors. Uh, I was there from 2007 through 2011. And if you remember that time frame, Unfortunately, the company ended up going through bankruptcy. So during that time, you know, I was very anxious about my job. My peers were anxious about their job. And I wanted something that would allow me to make money outside of my W-2. And real estate is the thing that came up. So I started my journey into real estate around that time frame. Even though it took a couple of years to buy that first property, that's what really kicked off the journey. Well, fast forward to about 2016. 
I was investing in real estate, building up my portfolio, uh, and I bought an eight-unit building. And my wife and I just saved our money and bought a property. We'd save and buy a property. But it took a year, year and a half, two years. Every time we saved, we would buy a bigger property. And we were having children. We had, you know, our family was expanding. So we couldn't save quite as much as we did in those early days. Well, the second thing that happened in that time frame. I just bought a property, so now I'm I'm equity rich, but really I'm cash poor because all my money's tied up in these deals. And the company I was working for also happened to go under bankruptcy. So here I am a second time. Now this company is going under, and I'm realizing that my strategy for real estate investing was a smart strategy. But if I'm only relying on the company and the, the money I have in the bank, well, now we've got an issue. So I started to learn about working with other people's money, raising private capital, and I ended up going down that path. And that really changed for us because now I was able to keep looking for deals as opposed to waiting for me to have that money saved up in my bank account. So now we could build a real business out of this. We could scale. We could continue to, be, continue to hunt for opportunities as opposed to solely buying properties when we had that money involved in our bank account. So that was huge because that allowed us to grow, that allowed us to share in the profit, that allowed us to help other people and to really insulate ourselves from a W-2 job that I could potentially lose or other changes in the environment or the economics. So what you're saying is there's lots of reasons <laughs> that you started using <laughs> private money. Uh, one big reason I heard you say to use private money is that it allows you to, first of all, um, enjoying out, enjoying uh, going out to dinner where you want to because you actually can pay your credit cards <laughs> instead of being rich in equity and poor in cash. Uh, so, it, so private money fixes your cash flow problem. Uh, I also heard you say private money allows you to grow and scale your business much quicker than relying on your own, you know, liquidity, your own cash, your own resources. So I hear this question all the time, John, and that is, well, why don't you just borrow the money from the banks? Why are you going to, you know, private money and private lenders? But before you answer that question, John, let's be very clear. Who are you talking about? Who is a private lender? What is a private lender versus, you know, a bank or institutional money? And then follow that up with, well, why don't you just borrow money from the banks? Well, one thing that's great about real estate is you have a lot of flexibility in how you structure your deals. So for us, we really don't work with private lenders per se, but we do work with private investors. And for all intents and purposes, it's the same thing, right? Uh, the only difference is with a lender, they don't have equity in the deal and they are getting paid a kind of a, a structured return. But with an investor, they do have some level of equity in the deal uh, so they're going to ride or die kind of with you in the deal. So for us, we typically buy multifamily apartments. And in those deals, the bank will provide the large share of the money needed. So let's say you're doing a, a $10 million deal. Let's just say a million dollar deal for easy numbers. So if you're doing a million dollar deal, uh, the bank may do, say, 75% of that. So they'll loan you $750,000. But you still have to come up with $250,000 yourself. Now, the bank doesn't necessarily care that it's your money from your bank account. They just want you and your team to have $250,000 equity into the deal. So this is where you can partner with other investors and raise that capital. Maybe you bring a little bit of that money, 25, 50K, but maybe you raise the other $200,000 and you bring those individuals on. So we are talking to everyday professionals. And the reason that's really cool is I think some people assume that, hey, if you're going to go and raise money, you've got to find other millionaires, people who have a lot of money in their bank account to win. That's simply not true. You can raise money from everyday professionals, just like you and I, people who love real estate or at least are intrigued by real estate. Maybe they don't have the knowledge, the experience, the time, the patience <laughs> to deal with everything that's involved with investing in real estate. So they can join us, invest in our deals. They can become a partner with the deal. But they're not being a landlord. We take on all of those headaches and responsibilities. So they get the benefits of investing in real estate without the headaches of being the landlord. And again, you can find lots of different people, uh, even people who don't think they have the money to invest. What we found is many of these professionals tend to change jobs and change their careers you know, every few years. And what do they do with those old 401ks? Usually nothing. 
they, they're still there. They're sitting in an old Fidelity account or something like that. And those funds are just sitting there in whatever investment they were selected in. You can actually take those funds from an old job, an old 401k, and you can roll them into what's called a self-direct IRA. And you now take control over the investments. You can invest in real estate. You can invest in deals like this. You can do private lending. There are a lot of options available. So a lot of times people just need to learn what the options are, and they may have more access to capital than they think. So, John, what you're saying is, is the way you use private money on these commercial deals, multifamily apartments, is you will use and borrow bank or institutional money, say for 75% of the deal. But then you will, in addition to that, instead of having to come up with the other 25% on your own, you will bring in private lenders uh, to the deal to where they uh, perhaps along with yourself, but they will make up the difference of that 100% that you need to borrow in order to make the deal work. So that's a beautiful marriage made in real estate. You've got institutional money, you've got private money from individuals. And of course, when we're saying private money, uh, we're talking doing business with human beings, private money. As you just said, they have money either in their investment capital or they have money in retirement accounts from a previous employer uh, in 401ks. And, you know, because of what you just said, John, that's so important for us real estate investors to know what self-directed IRAs are. They're also known as third-party custodians. You know, I, I tell my real estate investing students that are wanting to raise private money, an actionable item you need to do is establish a relationship with a self-directed IRA company so that when you're talking with a new private lender that wants to get involved in real estate passively and they have retirement funds that they would like to invest, you already have a connection. You already have a relationship with a self-directed IRA company and representative that you can introduce your new private lender too, to where they can transfer their retirement funds uh, tax-free, penalty-free over to a self-directed IRA company uh, to where they can then loan money out and invest in real estate. Uh, again, with a pretty you know conservative, uh, mitigated, low-risk investment and mitigating you know a lot of taxes along the way, I've got private lenders investing in my deals uh, from their retirement funds that they moved over to a self-directed IRA. I've got one private lender that's made $65,000 in one year, totally tax-free, not tax-deferred, but tax-free because of the type of retirement account that he had in the self-directed IRA company. So if you are listening to this uh, show and you are a um, wannabe real estate investor or you're a seasoned real estate investor with, you know, a hundred houses in your portfolio or you've got commercial properties as well. And you want to raise money or you want to raise money from private lenders. Then I've got a free gift for you. I've got a brand new private money guide that I just recently finished writing. It's called seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate business and help you build incredible wealth. You want to learn about self-directed IRAs? You want to find out how to find private lenders? Then you want to download this private money guide absolutely for free at www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide. That's jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide to get you as the real estate investor on the fast track to locating and getting all the private money you would want for your real estate deals. So, John, my next question is, in dealing with these private lenders, first of all, where do you find them? I mean, you know, you talk about you raise private money from individuals, from these professionals. Um, my guess is you don't walk up and down the sidewalks of Cincinnati with a sandwich sign on your on your back saying, hey, let me tell you about private money. Um, how do you find them? 
Well, that's a great guess because I do not do that. Uh, that would be uh, a sight to see, though. <laughs> but yeah, how do you find the money? That's that's a question that a lot of people have, and the real answer is this: you know, most people will tell you to start with friends and family, and I agree and disagree with that philosophy. Uh, I'm going to start with the disagree part. The reason is your friends and family are your friends and family. You know, it's going to be a little tough to invite them to invest with you and the relationship there. You're going to have to manage and navigate. And many of these people don't know much about investing and maybe don't have the means to invest. With that said, you do want to start with these people. And the reason you start with them is they know you, they trust you, and they like you. But instead of asking them to invest, what I like to do is I tell them what we're doing. I show them how it works. And then I ask them if they know anyone who would be interested in learning more. I don't necessarily ask them if they're interested, but I ask if they know anyone who would be interested. What I've found is if someone themselves is interested, then they're going to say, well, I might be interested. Or what about me? And maybe you've created this, this sense of FOMO that this was an opportunity that you know, they, they're going to miss out on, or maybe they're curious why you didn't invite them to, to invest or be a part of it. But you want them to raise their hand and say, yes, I'm interested. If they're not interested, or if the timing's not right, or they don't have the capital, what you've done now is you've given them the chance to think of someone else, and maybe they can make an introduction. And the goal here is to expand your network. So what you want from these people is a warm introduction. They may not be interested, but maybe they have a colleague, maybe they have an uncle, maybe they have a friend, maybe they have someone else in their circle that would be the right fit for you. Now, the key here is you have to help them understand the kind of people you're looking to talk to. Notice earlier when I talked about someone who had changed a job recently. Well, those are the kind of people who may have an old retirement account, right? So I don't know how much money they make necessarily, but if I'm talking to people who are busy professionals, well, they tend to hang with other busy professionals. And if you know these people make six-figure incomes, likely the friends and the people they hang out with are also going to make six-figure incomes. So this is how you start that conversation and you can build from there. Once you establish that, you can go to more sophisticated approaches, such as you know getting on social media and creating content and things like that. But I always start with talk to your friends and family, understand what it is that you are pre uh, presenting to them, and ask them for some warm introductions. John, are you sure your nickname is not Jay Connor? <laughs> <laughs> Brother, let me tell you something, brother. You just told my story. We got the same to... initials, JC. So, well, hey, look, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, but yeah, you just told my story as to how I got started in private money. Um, today, I call the method that you just described the indirect method. Mm -hmm. uh, I started using it, I didn't know it had a title, I just intuitively started using it. Um, and the way I raised my first private money, uh, you're in multifamily, I'm in single family houses. It's all the same money, folks. It's all the same money, whether you're in single family, multifamily, other types of commercial deals, land, doesn't matter. It's all the same private money. But when I started raising private money, um, I went up to a gentleman at church on a Wednesday night at Bible study. And I asked him if we could visit for a few minutes after Bible study. And he said, sure. We got together after Bible study. And here's exactly what I said to him. I said, look, I need your help. And, you know, I've discovered, John, that most people really do want to help if they can. And I said, I need your help. And I, you know, I told him, I said, I've opened up my real estate investing business um, to people I know and trust. And I'm paying really insane high rates of return. Uh, and when you run across somebody that's like complaining about, you know, the volatility of the stock market or, you know, the stupid, you know, low interest rates they can get on a certificate of deposit, uh, would you refer them to me? And he said exactly what you said they say, John. He said, well, what have you got in mind? And of course, he and his wife had investment capital. 
uh, that wasn't earning hardly anything at the, at the local bank. The, you know, the stock market was so volatile. They had been living through that. And um, they became, you know, one of my very first private lenders by me just asking them for their help to spread the word um, that, you know, I'm looking for those individuals. So, I mean, one thing that, that I hear people say all the time is, you know, that ugly word fear, that four letter word that starts with an F, F-E-A-R. And, you know, they, the fear of rejection, fear of rejection. Well, you know, when, when you frame it right, first of all, I never ask for money. I never ask for money directly. I teach people what private money is. And, and then, of course, by nature, they want to help. So, John, you and I are two peas in a pod uh, with the same exact approach, same exact um, experience when we started out. And I still do it the same today. Now, you said something a moment ago that might have flown over um, someone's ears, and I don't want them to miss it. You said that when you're talking to somebody, you evoke FOMO, F. E-O-M-O, FOMO, F-O-M-O. Tell our audience, what in the world is FOMO and what was the context of you talking about FOMO? Yeah, that's the fear of missing out, okay? And part of what you want to do when you're talking to people, and you don't want to mislead them or overpromise, but when you have great deals or great opportunities and you're making money in real estate, well, the people want to make money with you, Right. So when you share these opportunities, you want to let them know that, hey, you're talking to multiple people, you know, you're talking to people, you're not asking them for money, you're reaching out, you're building your network, you're sharing this opportunity with people, and it's up to them to decide whether or not it's a fit for them. But as they're making that decision, one of the things that they're going to be thinking about is that they don't want to miss out on a great opportunity, particularly when the market is uncertain and they know what their current investments are doing. And if they could invest with someone they know that can help them grow their portfolio, it's a great choice. So that's what we're talking about. And I love the point you made, Jay, about not asking for money. And you're, you're right. We are the same exact way. And, and the thing that's really cool about this approach, and it doesn't matter if you're buying houses, apartments, hotels, whatever, private money is private money. And with private money, you have to be the person creating the opportunity. And if you're creating the opportunity, you're inviting other people to join you. And by inviting people to join you, you're going to create that FOMO. You're going to create that energy where people want to work with you because they know that they can know, like, and trust you. And you're going to do everything you can to make that deal successful. And that's a really important aspect of this because if you're asking people for money, well, now they have questions about how deal is good this, or how good this deal actually is if you have to walk around asking people for money versus taking the time, building your network, and creating opportunities for these people to join you. So it's always about really creating the opportunities, finding good deals, putting it together, and then having those conversations with the right people so you can add value to them and their goals. What year did you start raising private money to where you had your first private lender? I think 2017. So uh, okay. we had been investing since 2012. Uh, so about five or six years, everything by ourselves. After about five or six years, we started working with other investors and raising money. Cool. Um, one, one question, actually one fear, one fear that I hear real estate investors voicing all the time. Now, this this is in the realm of single single family houses. Mm -hmm. um, so I know you're in the multifamily and apartments, but how would how would you address this fear and this question? I'm a brand new real estate investor. Never, you hear the question already coming, John. I've never borrowed private money. Even if I know how to structure it, even if I know how to protect everybody, who is going to loan me money and come into my project and it's my very first deal and I've never done a deal before? Listen, that's a, that's a great question and it makes a lot of sense on the surface, right? When you're a new investor, you don't have a track record. Why would people want to invest with you? 
Well, there's a few things. And uh, what I would say is we always start with the three C's when it comes to raising capital for deals. That first C is confidence. Okay. Confidence cannot be faked. You cannot manufacture it. We're not talking about fake hubris. I'm talking about the only confidence that comes from putting in the work. So just because this is your first actual deal doesn't mean that you have been preparing for this. If you listen to this podcast, if you have Jay's book, if you've been attending seminars and workshops, if you've been underwriting deals, if you've been attending events, you have been preparing yourself. You have been putting in the work and all of that counts to your knowledge. You know, everyone has to do something the first time. Surgeons have to do a surgery the first time. They have to prepare a lot before they walk into that room though, right? So you still have to prepare and you have to have that confidence based on your preparation. So that first C is confidence. The second C is credibility. And this is where having mentors come in, uh, have been on a team, having surrounding partners, having other investors potentially, but that credibility, yes, it may be your first deal, but that doesn't mean you walk this road alone. Have someone in your corner who can help you navigate that. And don't be afraid to share that with people. Yes, this is my first deal. That's why I also have this other person on my team. They're going to help make sure everything is, is above board and we're doing everything the right way. Here's my attorney. Here's my property manager. Here's uh, you know anyone else that I want to call out on my team. But you want to highlight the credibility that you've built as a team, not just by yourself. And then at last, is connections. Again, if you're talking to someone who doesn't really understand real estate, Maybe they're going to need a little bit more time to get comfortable, but other real estate investors are going to see it and know it, and they're going to identify a good opportunity. So part of it is also recognizing who's going to be more likely to work with you. Those people who already know and like you and they trust you, maybe they don't know you as a real estate investor, but if you've had other successes and credibility in other fields, business, uh, as an attorney, as a doctor, if people see you as someone who is credible in that space, they're going to be willing to take that bet on you because they know that you are a person who figures things out. So it's better to have the ability to figure things out and be resourceful than to just look back and say, hey, for 10 years, I've been in real estate. So if you have the confidence that only comes from putting in the work, the credibility that comes from you know having wins, but also the team that you've established, and then the connections, the network to go out there and talk to people, you will be successful even if it is your first time. John, I've been the host of this show for many years. I have asked that question many times, and your answer is absolutely the best answer to that question I've ever heard. You nailed it, man. And I love the three C's. That's so easy to remember. The confidence. And like you said, you can't fake confidence. You either know what you're talking about or you don't know what you're talking about, whether you've done your first deal or not. I love it. Confidence credibility, uh, connections. And you know, that credibility is like, you know, like you said, you got on your team, you got your real estate uh, attorney in place. You got your CPA in place. Uh, and you make, and, and, and you know, here's a side note. You've got your coach or your mentor in place. I mean, it's like, if you've never done a real estate deal before, you better have a coach or a mentor on your team to be watching out for you. I don't care how many seminars or how many books you've read, have somebody on the team, like John just said, that has, you know, walked through the minefield. And, you know, another way of saying what you just said is leverage your relationship, leverage your connections. You know, I'll have uh, new real estate investors working with me and they'll ask me that question They say, Jay, I'm like brand new. I said, Good night. Who in the world is your business partner? His name is Jay Connor. And Jay Connor has rehabbed over 450 houses in this world of single family houses. And so when somebody says, what's your experience? You can honestly say, well, me and my team have rehabbed over 450 houses. And if there's a mistake that's been made, it's already been done, right? Leverage your relationship. John, thank you for nailing that question. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's a tough one. And I, and I, to your point, I get the question and it's the thing on many people's mind. And it's hard for us as Americans in particular, because we are taught in school that we do our own work, right? You go to school, you're tested on what you know, you're not tested on you know, what your, your friends know and what the, the team you can put together knows or what the experience they have. But in business, it's not you by yourself. It's a team sport. 
and you can rely on someone like Jay and lean on the experience he has. But the one caveat I say to that, because I see people uh, who sometimes will go out there and say, oh, we've done X, Y, Z, but they haven't done much, is just make sure you're clear that you want this person on your team. You want to actually work with your coach or mentor. You want to work with that partner. You want to make sure they're looking at the deal and giving it the blessing or giving you the feedback. Don't just borrow their resume and then run off and make mistakes because that that's, defeats the purpose. The point is to actually have the relationships with these people. Make sure you're checking in. Make sure you're asking them questions because their knowledge, their expertise, the experiences that they have, it's only going to make life easier for you. So you want these people in your corner, not just for the resume, but to actually be able to tap into that knowledge and expertise. John, I've got thousands and thousands of people listening to Raising Private Money podcast. Uh, who uh, in my listenership and audience would you like to connect with and what type of person would you like to connect with and how can they connect with you? Yeah, there's two types of people we like to connect with all the time. One's going to be a passive investor, and that's going to be kind of a private money investor, private money lender, someone looking to maybe get into multifamily, but not do it where they're hands on. So if that sounds like you or you want to learn a little bit or maybe just diversify a little bit of what you're already doing, I'd be happy to talk. You can just go to our website, kasmancapital.com. On there, you'll see a link for our new investors. You just click that, set up some time for us to talk, and I'd love to chat with you there. The John, before is, you before you get yeah. the second one, uh, I want to spell your yes. uh, website. So that is www.kasman, that's spelled C-A-S-M-O-N, capital.com, kasmancapital.com, www dot casman c-a-s-m-o-n capital dot com go ahead john thank you jay and the second is that active investor if you're out there finding deals you're crushing maybe single family maybe you want to add some multifamily to your portfolio but you're looking for someone to help you just navigate the nuances of investing in larger multifamily deals i'd be happy to talk to you as well uh, you can go to the same website, kasmancapital.com, and uh, you can find information there. One thing that we have on our website that may be helpful for both of those groups is a sample deal package. And the sample deal package is great because it allows you to understand some of the terminology, the deal structure, which could be a little different than just private lending. Uh, it also helps you understand the kind of information we're looking for when we're doing a deal. So whether you're a passive and you want to understand what should you be looking for before making an investment, or you're an active investor and you want to put your own deals together and you try to understand what kind of information do you want to share with investors, this will help you look more professional and it's going to help you understand the business at a higher level. So go to kasmancapital.com slash sample deal and you can find that sample deal package right there. That's awesome. John, thank you so much for taking me the taking the time to join me here on Raising Private Money. Absolutely, Jay. Hey, thanks for having me. Great conversation. And I hope people are out there and they feel more comfortable and confident going out there, talking to their network to raise private money for their real estate deals. Absolutely. Well, there you have it, my friend. Another episode of Raising Private Money. I need your help. Uh, if you found this episode valuable, and I'm sure you did, be sure to follow if you're listening on iTunes. If you are watching on YouTube, be sure to click that bell and subscribe so you don't miss out. And also share this episode with your friends, families, colleagues, uh, for those that would benefit from it as well. So I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. Here's to taking your real estate investing career to the next level. And I'll see you right here on the next Raising Private Money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's j-c-o-n-n-e-r.com slash money guide. And download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide.